everybody! Welcome to Pale in Comparison. In this podcast, my sister uses her knowledge of the other verse to take a look at Pact, while those least appreciated work, and I try to not give away any spoilers. I'm Jenny, and Malia convinced me to read Worm. I'm Malia, and Jenny convinced me to read everything else. This episode, we are covering Damages, chapters 2.5 and 2.6. Before we get into that, however, I'd like to issue a spoiler warning. This podcast is filled with pale spoilers. If you don't know who made The Hungry Choir and don't want us to tell you, stop now, read Pale, and come back to this podcast. As for fact, there will be full spoilers through the chapter that we are covering. All right, so quick chapter summary. Miss Lewis instructs Blake and Rose on how to fight against a fairy. Blake challenges the fae to a duel and manages to win. He takes some hair as trophy. Then they go to drop off the letter. Miss Lewis leads a detour towards Johannes's territory, then back home where they meet Maggie at their front door. All right, so we'll start with Miss Lewis um, acting as a mentor, essentially, to Blake and Rose, and she guides them through the conflict with the Fae. Yeah, so I totally should have guessed this was a fairy. <laughs> um, I just, I think what kind of threw me off was that, like, Big G and Mariska are so scary and so competent. And I think that, like, I was just like, the first, like, thing they actually fight can't be a fucking fairy. Like, we can't, yeah. <laughs> we can't be going this hard this fast. I also was just sort of like, ah, oh, yes, the Duchamp saw them and therefore the Duchamps are here. And, like, what does a fairy have to do with that? Not thinking that, like, a fairy would be their familiar. Um, because, mm-hmm. like, is discussed later, this fairy must kind of suck if she ended up as a familiar to a practitioner instead of like still messing around with the courts. So I felt kind of validated by that. But also, yeah, my bad. <laughs> I mean, I'm not gonna lie, I probably wouldn't have thought about that uh, <laughs> off the bat either. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, what did you think about Miss Lewis during all this? She's really great. I really love her. She's really scary, but she seems to really like slash care about Blake, at least. I feel like she's maybe a little bit so-so on Rose, but I think she likes Rose. I don't know. I like that she seems to really enjoy what she's doing as this, like, mentor role. Like, she, I think she's really enjoying this break from her horrible job and that she really likes teaching, quote-unquote. And I think she's good at it, but mm-hmm. she's also... She has to be a little bit emotionally separate from everything because she's like, yeah, you're probably gonna die, and whatever. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Um, and she pretty much just met these guys too, so. That's true. Yeah, it was just, I don't know. It was really neat seeing her, like how cool she was throughout the whole thing. It made me confident that things were going to be okay, but also I think that like her backup plan was literally like release a demon, which isn't really things are going to be okay. <laughs> I mean, that is kind of like, they're kind of demon lawyer people, so, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Are you saying that wouldn't be your backup plan? If you were a lawyer practitioner? Demons? <laughs> <laughs> I like yeah, to I think I'd have face. <laughs> less extreme, like, things at my disposal. And I mean, Miss Lewis is, like, constrained. She can't apparently practice when she's not working and she's on a break. But that seems dumb. And <laughs> hopefully I wouldn't be in this situation. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't expect that you would use demons. Thanks. I'm just, <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> High praise. <laughs> One thing that kind of st- stuck out that I don't know if it, this is like bad that I thought this, but I was like kind of disappointed and surprised that Blake doesn't know how to pick locks. But I was just like, oh, is that like too cliche that like the boy lived on the streets and is like, you know, like not edgy, but you know, like, you know, have you ever tried to pick a lock, Malia? I have not. There is a YouTube channel called The Lock Picking Lawyer or something like that. And it's a yeah. lawyer and he just like picks locks on his YouTube channel. Oh, and that's cool. apparently he's good at teaching people or something. Maybe I should have watched that. Because I actually bought a lock picking set a while back just because I was kind of curious. And I was like, hey, this could be good to know. And I like they, they gave me a little practice, is like a little see-through lock to practice with. Mm. And I can't even freaking unlock the see-through <laughs> practice lock. <laughs> It probably would help if I watched a video or something. Hmm. Like, hopefully I'm not just that naturally sucky at it. (laughs) But um, it's 
it's kind of a neat i mean i haven't really watched much of it but i think that he just can basically pick open almost anything or something like he's just and but he like rates wow. things like if you're like wanting to get a bike lock or whatever he's like don't fucking buy this you know like uh could be useful <laughs> <laughs> like if i'm late to court this is the lock i'm going for because i can break into this shit really fast <laughs> uh, that's awesome but i mean i'm just saying especially if you're homeless and you don't have access to youtube to watch the lock picking lawyer it's probably really hard to learn how to pick locks right off the bat <laughs> yeah i feel like maybe somebody would have like taught him and you know, i don't maybe. know but I mean, it's okay. That'd be funny if like everyone listening to this is like, I can pick locks. It's really <laughs> easy. I don't know what Jenny's talking about. <laughs> but hey. Well, maybe someone will teach you. Please, yeah. Know. Teach me your ways. I mean, <laughs> I don't really need to know it, but I did buy a lock picking set to practice just so it would be cool to not just have it collect dust. You know. <laughs> I probably should hide that in case like Oh, this is way, like, too advanced. I don't think my two-year-old's going to get into lock picking, but it probably wouldn't be the best thing to... I mean, you should, like, take him on the road, you know, do little, like, exhibition shows, watch the (laughs) amazing two-year-old pick this lock. (laughs) woohoo! Oh, man, we'd probably make a ton of money. That'd be (laughs) awesome. Because then even if they wouldn't give us anything, we could just, like, pick a lock that... I mean, not that people carry lock boxes around. Yeah, maybe that wouldn't work. It's not a pickpocketing show. All right. I'm not going to do any of this. I'm not going to steal things or commit crimes or, yeah, get my two-year-old to... Picking a lock and going around and being like, look, there's a lock. Can you open it? No, this two-year-old can. Isn't illegal. No, but it's kind of shitty parenting. Huh? Yeah, maybe. Okay. Were you really that is sort like, of exploded of your child. I was, like... I was thinking just the lock picking. not. Oh. And then I remembered the whole, like, like the taking him on the road. The amazing two-year-old. Woo! Right. Yeah, sure, yeah. sure. He already doesn't do that great in crowd, so that wouldn't go well. <laughs> He'll be fine. He just needs a little bit more. It's, it's hard with the pandemic and everything, too. Right. You know, a little bit harder to get play groups going. But, right. But, <laughs> um, but that doesn't mean I'm going to start basically, yeah, selling off, like, my kid, essentially, for his awesome yeah. skills. If anything, he would be, like, his best skill he can do right now is cartwheels, like, Oh my gosh, he can do cartwheels. You like do nobody's. cartwheels? Oh, not cart. I, I keep saying cartwheels because <laughs> Vitalis keeps saying cartwheels. No, this is, okay, this sounds a lot less impressive now. Everyone was like, "Oh, I'm so impressed." No, there's somersaults. That's a lot. No, less he's impressive. really good at it though. He's very good at somersaults. Yeah, I feel like he's gonna break his neck someday, but um, probably he hasn't yet. So I, guess I was worried no when I was watching him that he was gonna somersault like off of his bed, and he didn't. That's but good. I was worried about it. <laughs> he started doing them without using his hands today. What? Yeah. He just like threw him down, himself <laughs> down by his like his neck. And, I mean, he's fine. <laughs> so I guess that's cool. But can't really stop him, unfortunately. Mm. But <laughs> anyway, I'm such a good parent. Um, <laughs> all right. We're going to move on now. <laughs> Let me see. Mm. Yeah. So. Also really shows um, in this chapter, moving back, uh, how shitty it is that Blake keeps using his own blood. Um, like, yeah. even if he wasn't powerful, like, in ma- or like didn't have magic powers, it's not a great idea just to be draining your blood. Because that's going to make a normal person feel kind of weak after a while. I you mean, know? I don't think he's using enough. I want to say he's, I don't think he's using, like, that much blood in that yeah. sense. Hopefully not. But also... Yeah, you shouldn't, like, make yourself bleed and then, like, reach around into, like, garbage Rusty. piles and stuff. Yeah. Like. But also, yeah, I just, it's another example of how we keep hitting this beat. I wonder what Pact Raiders thought of the Kineteers and their power level, because I'm just like, wow, Blake, like, draws a connection blocker and then, like, can't use his sight as well. And there's, it seems to me that maybe Rose has something to do with that. But, like, they can just, like, you know, fly and turn themselves into smoke and, like, do all this shit, like, all the time, which is really fun. Um, But just, like, please, someone, like, uh, Blake needs a hot lead. Like, honestly, he doesn't yeah. need an implement or all that shit. Just somebody give him, like... <laughs> he needs something. something. <laughs> Poor guy. I know he reaches into that, like, trash can thing and he's, like, I think he said something <laughs> along the lines of he's going to get tetanus. You know, if I was one for making bold and specific predictions and I hadn't read the story... <laughs> I'd be like, well, that ties into Miss Lewis's really short lifespan, you know? It's going to get tetanus and just 
from oh. all his bad karma and stuff. Just that would be like a sad and like useless death. <laughs> <laughs> She's very much covering her bases. That's true. That would be very sad. Don't get tetanus. If anyone gets cut by rusty metal or I guess rubs a bunch of dirt in their cut, because apparently there's a good amount of tetanus in the dirt too. If you're not up to date on your boosters, go get that shot because that's not a fun way to to die. <laughs> I heard that like tetanus lives on your skin or something, so it's not necessarily rusty things. It's just like if it gets deep enough in there. I am I wrong? Feel I mean <laughs> I haven't heard that, but okay. I mean I don't know. You could be right. I've always heard that it was in like rusty metal and in dirt and things. I didn't mm-hmm. think that it lived on your skin. <laughs> um. I also, is it a bacteria? I don't know anything. About it. It, it, yeah, it is a bacteria. Let me see. The CDC has a pretty good page about tetanus. It causes lockjaw. Yep. That's like one of the main things it causes. It's real bad. It's real bad. Apparently one to two in 10 cases are fatal. So it's like not to where you're totally going to die. But mm. like, that's still like potentially one in five, mm-hmm. which is kind of, I don't know. I wouldn't risk that personally right. and also right. it's kind of nice to be able to open your mouth you know um, <laughs> it's kind of a, one of those pluses of yeah. life i guess you know so get your tennis shot <laughs> i kind of wanted to start talking a little bit about miss lewis's teaching style like it seems like her the whole thing is like or i really like that she said i want you to be confident more than i want you to be entirely accurate and efficient in what you're doing mm-hmm. um it seems like She's trying to teach them strategies that will help them in the long term, but she also isn't quick to like volunteer information. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I think I've talked about this in a previous episode that Blake and Rose are both really, really good where Blake is a really good at acting and doing and Rose is really good at the words part of the practice. And I do think that like confidence is kind of what they need. And also I'm like, self-compassion like they need to like forgive themselves when they mess up and those two things will really help because like totally second guessing everything that they do will like get Blake killed immediately because his strength really seems to be just like action and I like I'm kind of frustrated with her style of teaching like I wish she would you know sit them down and tell them literally everything and you know walk them through things nice and gently but this might be the best way to go about this I'm not sure Mm -hmm. I feel like the practitioner lawyer who keeps saying like oh my gosh you're gonna start crying now is probably not the type to be really gentle you know <laughs> I, uh, she's yeah well i think that was sort of funny though because she was just like i'd be embarrassed like please don't like it wasn't like hey you're gonna cry like a baby it was just like uh no i know emotions that, are gross still, like well, it's, it's like she said that she said that several times i think like mm. don't start crying now like come on I just don't think that's the most, like, gentle, like, nurturing type of... Oh, yeah, no, no. Yeah. But even, like, but- like Mr. Miyagi, right? Like, one of the, like, best teachers of all time, according to, like, the pop culture or whatever, like, didn't give a fuck. Like, he was like, I'm not going to explain shit to you. Like, you are going to figure this out on your own. But it, like, you know, the first time you're watching it, you're like, this is so frustrating and dumb. What's going on? And then it's like, aha. Uh-huh. Like, it makes His sense. brilliant secret plan. Yeah, but maybe... Maybe it would have been better to just sit down and be like, hey, this is why this is happening. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, they don't really have time to sit down and go over all that stuff, though. You know? Right. No, in this situation, they don't at all. No. Um, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure if they, like, set up a payment plan, she'd be down. <laughs> yeah, which they should not do if they can help it. Because <laughs> um, I can't imagine what they're paying, but can't be good. <laughs> No, probably, probably not. I also liked the line because she she's talking about the practice and this is where we're starting to learn about like the dramaticism and the performance nature of it all. And she says, you can be dull and methodical about it, but that's only going to impress a specific kind of other. And I like laughed and I was like, why do I feel like this is like the karmic law? Others like they're like the sticks in the mud. <laughs> like <laughs> want you to be dull and methodical. And like either that or it's like, like the accounting others or something like i just it, it made me chuckle imagining like the really boring spirits <laughs> what are what are, are the like, other yes, boring you. spirits you think of 
So, like, he got the accounting and the karmic law that you're like, those are probably boring. Who else would you say mm-hmm. is boring? Like, dull and methodical. I'm thinking of, like, some sort of, like, not, like, science experiments broadly, but, like, the parts of science experiments that are very much, like, you have to take this, like, very small measurement of this very boring thing that, like, is not doing anything exciting Mm. and then like write it down and you have to do it in the exact same way like over and over and over and over and over over again if you had to combine boring and like methodical with evil who would you choose because i have one in mind what do you mean can you ask i'm just gonna tell you you you. like a person no like the like well i don't know like spirits or others or whatever like Uh uh-huh because the dmv yes (laughs) <laughs> that is exactly who I was thinking of. The DMV. Or what is I, I keep reading what they call it in Texas because like you know, uh, the, DPS. The DPS. Well they, is, there also is a DMV in Texas. Right? They just split the jobs slightly differently. I'm pretty sure. I've only lived here like five plus years. Yeah. You probably should know that. But <laughs> well DPS is where you get like your license and st- I think where you register your car. I don't yeah. remember. I don't know how it works in the rest of the world, but in America, at least, the DMV. Not to say that there's not nice people that work there, because I'm sure there are, but yeah. I feel like it kills your soul to work there, I'm guessing, because... It's it's a lot of paperwork and drudgery, and, like, mm-hmm. and no they, one is having a good time when no, they're there. I've never Everyone wants seen, to be doing something else. Yeah, I've never seen a happy person at the DMV. So I... <laughs> I um, worked with refugees in upstate New York, and my job was actually to take refugees to the DMV to, like, get identification. Mm. So I spent, like, a weird amount of time at the DMV and got to kind of know a lot of the people who, like, worked behind the counter. Like, not by name, but, like, they knew who I was and I knew who they were or whatever. And um, a lot of them are really nice. So, like, I have had fun at the DMV because I've, like, you know... That state that is a sentence that has never how to been said before. Say weird shit in, like... I, like, got to practice French and, like, I went to, I was part of a wedding for my friend who was having, like, an Indian wedding. And so they, um, I was a bridesmaid and we got, like, henna and stuff on our hands. And then the next week I took some Pakistani people to the DMV and we had, like, a three-hour conversation about, like, like, weddings and henna. And, like, I got to show them all the pictures and it was just, like, really nice. Well, that's cool. <laughs> yeah. All right. So I guess some ways the DMV... Even though it's kind of a hellhole, it can still facilitate some nice things if you have the right people. Yeah. But I'd still say, <laughs> for most people, I'm glad that you've had good experiences there. Yeah. That well, not the norm. I was there so often that hopefully I would have had at least some. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> oh, um, man. All right. Yeah. And then I guess the last thing in this section before we get into like the battle is that miss lewis mentions that the fairy court changes to different seasons over time and i was like that doesn't make sense because like we go to slash see different fairy courts in pale and Mm -hmm. like they seem to all be existing at the same time but then big g says something um at some point about the court completely changing not from like season to season but from like the concept of seasons to like the concept of something else and he's like except winter winter is always the same and i was like that's really interesting and i think is what miss lewis is getting at but also like mm. what and also like i don't know what's... Eh. very cool i'm really interested fairy are pretty awesome still i mean i think i'd get tired of their bullshit but it's pretty and stuff that's just because you're not on their level <laughs> I'm pretty sure, like, 16-year-old Malia would have, like, wanted to be a fairy practitioner. And it would have been, like, the worst fucking decision. So, thanks, parents, for not awakening me. I mean, I've... Yeah. This is kind of a sidebar, but I've started to, like, get really particular about what I say. Like, I've been, like, really trying hard to, like, not lie about things. (laughs) Even, like, potentially. It's really ridiculous, y'all. Like, I, um... Uh, I was doing paperwork for my job this summer. And I was, like... I'm going on a road trip and I was like, okay, yes, if I like, I will do my best to fill out the paperwork if I get it before I go on my road trip. But if I don't get it, I probably won't fill it out until like this date. Like I was very, like I was, I wasn't just like, oh yeah, I'll fill that out. Like I like went on this whole weird thing about it because I was like, I can't lie. (laughs) (laughs) 
It was real weird. That's the secret. Like, Wild Bo <laughs> saw Liar Liar, right? And got so inspired. He was like, man, you know, what would life be like if some people just couldn't lie because some people are such <laughs> D-bags? Um, and decided to make a much better story. Wait, what? I just realized... There's a whole swath of mo- so like one of the questions that like people ask during law school orientation and crap is like oh what's your favorite law related movie and I've never heard anyone say liar liar but someone should because it's fucking great it's great um I might bring that up next time I have a conversation about it it happens like r- relatively frequently <laughs> how accurate would you say liar liar is to the whole law uh, uh I haven't seen it since entering law school mm. all I really remember is the whole like the pen is blue or the pen is red or whatever and he like in the that's bathroom true. like and then he's like running down the tarmac at one point that's right um important law things you know and the whole thing about like i mean i like the, the, there was the like interesting loophole where like she lied and so her marriage was invalid or whatever and that was possibly i haven't taken family law but like that's possibly a thing it's true i'd also like to see your take on my cousin Vinny. oh so did. good uh, P- there are professors uh evidence professors who actually show bits of that movie to be like really this is how you introduce evidence <laughs> like, really <laughs> he yeah he um or that movie does a good job i do freaking love that movie it's so good it's so good like yeah yeah it, if you guys haven't seen that you really need to look it up because it's fantastic um yeah. what was what's her name like the lead uh oh my God. or not the, let me see I need to look this up. This. She's my favorite. I'm actually in She's love with kind her. of amazing. Marissa Tomei. Oh my god, yes. Marissa Tomei. Yeah, she won... Didn't she win, like, a Academy Award or something? Oh my for that? For what? For that movie. Like, for best... Um, oh, really? People are gonna be like, you're an idiot. Oh, for... Yeah, she won the Academy Award for Best Supporting Actress for that movie. She deserved it. She deserved it. You guys need to see that movie you haven't hopefully all of you are like geez we've all seen it so stop harping about it but um i might watch that again later (laughs) um sometime in the next couple days because i really like that movie um i watched it with dad over break when i was home and it was yeah delightful anyway on to our podcast again um talking about a bunch of random crap just like always it's always that's the charm though right i mean that's what I, I mean, like they think. can read packed. They don't need us. <laughs> that's that's true. I mean, we're very They're unnecessary. They're here for the movie suggestions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The movie suggestions and the random titles. Yeah. You really, the medical facts. And the yeah, medical facts are hopefully accurate. <laughs> um, and the law facts that are also, or that are probably accurate. Um, yeah. Oh, we're clear. very unnecessary. We're a very unnecessary podcast. I mean, I'm glad you guys are listening. Um, we are not needed at all. Um, if you know, you can just go and read Pact if you want, but uh, I'm assuming we're here to fill some void, you know, yeah, in your it life. Won't be as fun, <laughs> all right. Anyway, <laughs> uh, so moving on, Blake ends up um, basically insulting the fairy um, and challenges to her to a duel, and frankly, it goes a lot better than expected, yeah. Um, well. Does it? <laughs> I mean, they I mean, don't wins, die. Right? Yeah, but he like his vision goes blurry, and he like bleeds a lot. I mean, like he like wins, which was yeah, but, cool. And I mean, I he did it. Yeah, but I didn't expect Blake to like die in this moment, right? I expected everything to go okay, and so I'm not sure if this was like ah a tremendous victory. Well, um, but-, but it was. Miss Lewis didn't have to, she didn't have to step in and release the team. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I feel like that's a plus. That's a win. Yeah, I love that the two plans to keep them safe are summoning demons. Like, because I think that's what's in her box or something. And then, like, plan number one is, like, Blake summon a demon. And plan number two is, like, I will release a demon from this box. I might be wrong about the box, but that's what it seemed like. And I was like, these are bad plans. <laughs> <laughs> um but i like that blake like uses that threat very effectively and also says like i wasn't going to do it i'm never going to do it kind of a thing or like i'm, I'm not going to say that name again mm-hmm. or whatever 
I think that the threat that maybe one day he will change his mind and actually do it will be enough. But I wonder if establishing a practice of like crying demon all the time will um, fuck up his practice somehow. Like the, the, mm-hmm. the practice, the repetition of like pretending to or threatening to call a demon and never really doing it. I hope not. But yeah, I guess. better than him summoning a demon. <laughs> yeah. Let me see. So the demon name that she gave him was Ornius. I was thinking Ornias. Ornias. Well, yeah. You know, you're probably mispronouncing it in one way or another, but Or Ornias, Ornius. I don't know. Ornias sounds better, which almost makes me think it's Ornius <laughs> because it's a more annoying sounding name. <laughs> but Ornias. Yeah. Well, I was thinking. That Ornias is maybe like a fallen angel. I mean, I guess that's what demons are, but I wasn't sure if these were all like Christian, have Catholic, you Googled whatever. Or- Ornias or Ornias? I have not. But so. she said he places the stars, or he used to place the stars in the sky, and now he sends them hurtling down to earth, which sounded angelic. So, specifically, assuming this is the same one, assuming there's only one of them, uh-huh. <laughs> Ornias or, is the first um, demon that's mentioned. In what is it, the Testament of Solomon? So is it is. It's a, it's a composite text. Um, it says it's associated with the Old Testament, but not regarded hmm. as canonical scripture by Jews or Christian groups. But Ornias harasses this young man who's favored by Solomon um, by stealing half his pay and sucking out his vitality through his right thumb, which is very specific. Uh. And then. Some other stuff happens, basically. But <laughs> I'm not going to read through all this, <laughs> just to be frank. But <laughs> but he does show up. Um, he's a real, yeah. He's yeah, a I'm I'm kind of assuming, because apparently um, Furfur is also real. So I'm kind of yeah. assuming that they're all going to, well, I guess, on. what's his name? Barbatora might not be real. I haven't Googled any of these. But um, it's kind of exciting that That's they're true. based on real uh, demon myths. Um there's this website. I don't know if I want to click on it though, but it does talk about or Well, it's probably not. it's occult occultworld.com. That's probably fine. Hopefully, I won't get a virus and shut down. Let's see. So, okay, already this website looks legit. <laughs> um, Was that sarcasm? Just a little bit, but it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so it says um, Ornias um, is one of the fallen angels who is bested by King Solomon. Um, hmm. According to the Testament of Solomon, Ornias is an annoying, vampirizing demon who lives in the constellation Aquarius. He has shapes shifting, I can't speak, shape shifting ability. He strangles men born under the sign of Aquarius because they have passion for women born under the sign of Virgo. He becomes a man who likes boys and causes them pain when he touches them. He turns into a heavenly winged creature and he can assume the form of a lion. This is the dawning of the age of Ornias. Oh my gosh. Yeah, well, I was thinking, I wonder if Johannes is familiar, knows Ornias, or like any of Blake's demons, based on my theory that the, the doggy dog is a constellation or whatever. Like, they both mm. deal with like astral bodies maybe i also Mm. was wondering about the whole saying the name seven times things like like if in 25 years blake is like oh ornias like you know like will it show up then or like because he's just waiting i mean that's true like that makes sense because it seems like it like built up and you know maybe eventually it wouldn't work but I don't know. It's like a big bomb that's about to go off and it's just like hit the pause button and we're all just like, well, fuck. <laughs> it's like all the movies where like they <sighs> managed to like um, defuse the bomb by like with like one or two seconds left. Because mm-hmm. it's always that. They never do mm-hmm. it like with like five minutes remaining. It's always sure. like right at the end. But in this case, Blake is the bomb. Blake is the bomb. Dot yeah. com. <laughs> There's so many good potentials for episode titles already. I'm so glad. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we're agreeing to disagree. I think even if he wouldn't have died right here, things could have gone bad. Because, I mean, you saw with the 
I mean, even if he just lost the duel, she wasn't going to kill him. She was just going to put him in a random realm and torture him for, what is it, one year, one month, one week, and one day or something. And keep, keep, I think she was saying she was going to try to make it a challenge to herself to make it the worst day he's ever had and then keep doing that every day. <laughs> like, um, So it could have could have been bad. You know? no, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just, in this story, that wasn't going to happen because we got to move on. I mean, you know, this fairy is not, this fairy is not Patrick, you know, like we're not. I guess so. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I thought it was interesting. The things that like Ms. Lewis, like kind of almost let slip or whatever about, and she's like, obviously knows a lot about Blake and Rose and why Rose Mm -hmm. was made and like all of that stuff. And it seems like, I think she says something like, I see why she picked you or something. Mm -hmm. And Blake was like, "What, what are you talking about? Like, and she's like, oh, I said too much. And so I was just like, wait, was Molly not her actual, like, not actually what she wanted? Or was she still thinking, like, oh, Molly's still the best shot, and then we'll go with Blake, and then I don't know about anyone else? But that mm. that almost made it seem like that Blake was, like, the actual hashtag chosen one all along. And Molly was like, well, got to do this in the meantime, or something. Um, mm. Neutral response. Someone <laughs> told me I should say that, so... <laughs> I'm I'm excited by that because I think it means that I'll find out someday. I mean, maybe, maybe not. <sighs> it could just fair. be like, okay. uh, yeah. <laughs> who knows? Yeah, not you, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So she has this box, and she's like, "This is this is going to be my backup plan," but really glad I didn't have to use it. I think she says something along the lines of like I was willing to break what is it the the spirit of one law to yeah. keep the letter of another or yeah. one oath to keep the letter one of oath. another and I was like I don't know what's going on like because <laughs> it seemed like she promised to keep them safe or something but I wasn't sure if that was the spirit of the law or or of the oath or if that was the letter I was the, assuming that was the letter and then there was oath. some unknown a known oath that she was planning on breaking the spirit of just in order to keep them safe. But Maybe. But I, I feel like the, other way. the spirit true. didn't keep them safe. <laughs> or like, not the spirit. What if the demon wouldn't have helped? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I guess we'll just have to see if a demon summoned. See what happens, uh, right? Yeah. <laughs> so he wins. Um, and Woo-hoo. basically is like, Miss Lewis is like, you can pick anything. Um, she's like, I would, I would probably eat the heart, but you know, whatever you want to do. Yeah, that ew and what and ah and well, <laughs> I mean it's Blake is already kind of like trying to dismantle this system because like this like you just point out this fairy was like I'm gonna keep you in another dimension and try to make like try to torture you for a year right mm-hmm. um and a month and a day and a whatever the fuck whereas he's like in a way, what is, like, the least that I can do to keep my oath? And it's like, bro, you need a power source. But also, I'm glad that he wasn't just like, aha, uh-huh, like, fuck you. Yeah. Um, it's it, Blake is much more compassionate in Rose in a lot of ways. And I think that goes back to, like, some of his past history and how he sees others, I think, more as people. Because mm, um, mm-hmm. Rose was like, ooh, I can take advantage of this situation. Like, I can challenge this fairy to, like, a duel right now or whatever. And then she won't be able to win and then it was the whole like well you defeat a defeated person by torturing them and it was like just kidding but yeah. <laughs> and like i appreciated that rose was like "Ooh, let's try to take advantage of this situation because they need to but i also love that blake was like no and like later he's like messing with her clothes is creepy so i'm not doing that and like i didn't want to hurt her anymore so like that was the thing that made s- and like i don't want to take her sword and that was the thing that made sense um yeah i'm wondering what else he could have done in terms of taking power that wasn't physical because miss lewis mm. was kind of like yeah you could have done that but he doesn't know shit and yeah yeah but yeah and he oh, he just oh he's such a baby he like goes and picks up the hatchet and like talks to june and is like thanks june and like sorry i threw you across the fucking room <laughs> and oh, <laughs> it's so nice and he like you know talks to the, with the fairy and is like hey like turn into a fucking bird and i'm gonna take you outside and then like he's really gentle with her and it's it's not there's not even a question he's just like yep this is happening and it was just very wonderful and i really love him and i'm really worried i mean 
part of me is like, no, Blake's never going to summon a demon. And then Blake, part of me is like, yeah, he definitely fucking is. Because obviously you can't not in this story. I don't know. Um, I'm mm-hmm. real torn. Because he's like a wonderful angel baby. Mm. Yeah. Neutral response. <laughs> yeah. Also, um, someone needs to tell Blake about what happens when you use connection blockers too much. Because he's used like eight in the past like five minutes. And I'm like, it all snaps back and everyone pays attention to you again, Blake. Like someone, and he doesn't have any reason to know that. And someone should mention it. <laughs> <sighs> well, basically after this, then Blake returns the familiar to her master. Who's Aww. like 13. Right? Yeah. 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 That's weird. Just thinking of like the kind of tears because I was like, oh, she's like a little child. And then I'm like, no, she's not. <laughs> she's a little teenager. Yeah. Um, but yeah, apparently they like bird familiars or like I'm wondering if they like bird familiars or if it's just like the familiars they choose tend to take bird like forms. bird forms. The canary was kind of an evocative one. I think that's Penny's or Penelope's. I don't know if we're her friend, but I like Penny. But I'm hoping it's not that her familiar is like a sacrificial like a, thingy like a mine canary right yeah right. that's like the connotation i think of when i think of canaries yeah. that and like worm um yeah i thought it was interesting that they all have bird familiars i just we haven't seen or even interacted with a whole bunch of familiars in pale yet we've seen some from far away and then there's snowdrop but this is giving me really strong pokemon vibes where it's like <laughs> this family like all has the bird pokemon and like <laughs> i really like it <laughs> Oh, man. Are you playing too much Pokemon Snap? I'm not playing enough Pokemon Snap. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that's valid. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm honestly not playing it that much because of finals and stuff. And also I'm like, well, I just did this four, this path four times. So now I'm going to go uh, do something else. But it's fun. It is pretty fun. I like it. I know. Yeah. I yeah. It. But I... I love this interaction. I love that he like swears, even though the little girl's there. I love that he's like very like he doesn't talk down to her. And again, mm-hmm. I guess she's not a little girl, but like he doesn't talk down to her. He just like explains the situation and he's very straightforward and very open like this. Like practitioners can't lie, but are often very like manipulative and deceptive and like shady as fuck. And this is like walking out and being like, hi, here's your bird. Um, Please don't try to do that anymore you know he, he just yeah. is very and he doesn't like ignore her and i really liked it and this is one of those moments where i was like oh blake's hot isn't he because penny is like obviously into him and he's like obviously like hi i don't want to die right now i don't have time like it doesn't cross his mind at all and that's really funny um <laughs> but it, i like her and i like that she was kind of like okay mom like shut up like whatever and i it was interesting seeing them deal with each other And, like, I know this means that I can't complain about taking her anymore because, like, this is her payment for, is, like, getting her family to back off on Blake temporarily. Yeah. Um, And it was, she's like, oh, my friends call me Penny. And, like, in his mind, he's like, Penelope. And I was like, god damn it, Blake. Like, (laughs) don't trust her, but you do need friends. I was also like, oh, does she like bad boys? Because she does seem to be into Blake. But then he spits on the ground and she's like, ew. So I don't know. Yeah, this kind of takes a little bit of the romance out of it. You know. <laughs> Just a little bit. <laughs> All right. Well, after that interaction, um, they go to drop off the letter. Taking pretty great care to avoid cameras. Rose, or Blake's pretty out of it, so he doesn't say <laughs> much. But Rose is able to conjure up some pretty good sounding words for the spirits. Yeah, she does really well. We talk about this a lot, but this is really something she excels at. Uh, I liked that they both did the talking thing, like the kinetiers, like Rose says a whole bunch of stuff, and then Blake, she like looks at him, and he's kind of like, oh yes, may this letter reach its whatever the fuck. Like, I liked <laughs> that they both kind of did that, and it was interesting how Blake didn't feel like compelled to, like the kinetiers. Well, maybe they don't always feel compelled to, but it's it's neat when they all do the thing. Yeah. Um, and uh, I thought it was interesting. I mean, oh God, there's so many like little like clues about Rose and hints about like stuff dropped throughout this chapter, which is annoying because it's like Rose doesn't seem to have either. She doesn't have the sight or like her sight doesn't see spirits or something. And that's weird. And like, what the fuck? 
what 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 is happening um and then like he's like oh am i more exhausted than i should be because of rose you know like is rose siphoning power from blake um that's kind of scary Mm -hmm. um because they need power and that's the thing that makes me worried about or like think that maybe they she wouldn't be a good familiar because if it won't actually increase their power because she's just like draining blake yeah um that would be bad that'd be bad that would be great but yeah i'm excited sort of i guess to see what happens with this letter but also Mm -hmm. like it strikes me as a bad idea but also i guess i don't know i just (laughs) yeah i'm not sure that they should be like haha let's fucking go after laird because maybe it'll make johannes and maggie like him more they're kind of desperate though and there's kind of a time limit to the next council meeting right sure but they're not gonna kill laird before the next council meeting (laughs) and that won't help i don't know i'm excited to see what happens but yeah i don't know be interesting all right so they drop off the letter and trying to kind of get some more information from Miss Lewis and she's not really, well, she doesn't want to give anything for free really, but she's like, I will take y'all on a walk Mm -hmm. towards a specific place. So they go um, and take a detour towards Johannes's territory, basically discover it's a giant vestige. Yeah, this is weird. I mean, solves the problem of like not being able to hunt innocents, but I was just like, why did he do this? And it was like, oh, this is what they were seeing through the scrying bull thing in the vision was they were seeing Johannes's domain because they it's described the same way where it's like sunset e twilight and like the twisted buildings and stuff and so that was kind of like oh cool like that's what was happening with that hmm. um but i'm kind of like why did he do this it's so it seems like maybe others or people who enter like pay with some power to be able to do that maybe and then that's how he can keep up his domain and continue to accumulate power ish something Mm -hmm. um and so it's probably some sort of transactional thingy something i was thinking maybe it makes it harder for practitioners to enter and fuck with because it's i mean i kind of see it as like a copy like overlaid on top of what's already there and that there might be like normal people actually living there that the others aren't fucking with and then there's like vestiges Mm. or whatever because, like, I don't know that it's the case that, like, randos from Jacob's Bell just, like, can't go to the North End. Like, that doesn't make sense. I don't know. I was really confused. <laughs> okay. Well, we'll probably never see this place again, so you'll just never know. Yeah, literally ever. We're definitely never coming <laughs> never back. Never coming back. Yeah. Ever. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so uh, others there can basically hunt vestiges of innocence there. Yeah. Like over and over again. Yeah. Which I don't love. I mean, we talked about this on the Hell Reflections episode a bit about others and their nature and like different things. Mm-hmm. But I, I mean, if this is a place where dogs of war can go and like kill people without killing people, maybe that's okay. But also like vestiges are real and feel things, mm-hmm. arguably like Rose. So yeah. that's shitty. But yeah, I just, I don't like the idea of, like, others being, like, yay, and, like, gleefully, like, murdering a bunch of people. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty cruddy if, like, you're a vestige and that's, like, your whole existence being, like, hunted and murdered over and over and over. Right. Because the only reason why it would be, like, definitely objectively better than, like, doing it to innocence is if, like, vestiges don't exist and aren't real. Like, this feels like Westworld, which I have not mm. seen, but, like... I think, like, androids or whatever they are, like, you know, like, feel and experience and are. And so it's real shitty, even though they're not, like, humans, to do that to them. Yeah. And, like, if the vestiges in this place are like Rose, it's real shitty (laughs) to do that to them. For sure. Yeah. I don't love this. Well, that comes up with a lot of interesting ethical thought experiments. Yeah. It's hard. (laughs) It's so hard. (laughs) i mean i think i don't know yeah i'm curious to see more because right now i'm just picturing a bunch of like boogeymen and like awful things being like let's fucking torture people and i'm hoping it's more i mean i don't know i bet it's gonna be more complicated than that but on the other hand it also might just be like a scary like horror fest Mm. all the time i also wonder like 
would this be a real bad place for Rose to go? Because she would she'd be like a vestige of just, you know, like cool. an other or of an innocent kind of that just gets hunted by all the other others. Hmm. Like she's not an innocent anymore. Yeah. Like, but she's I feel like she shouldn't go there. I feel like she's gonna be like, this will be a good idea. Blake, I'm so fucking fed up with you and this bullshit. I'm gonna go be with my people and it's gonna go real bad. <laughs> but we'll see. We'll have to see. <laughs> Moving on, if you're cool with that. Mm -hmm. Um, So they start heading back to their house. And Miss Lewis is basically asking them, like, why did you choose hair? So he gives a pretty decent explanation as to why he chose the hair as the reward. And then they discuss glamour. And that's an interesting discussion. Yeah, I just, it was kind of like walking through Blake's reasoning and Blake's instincts was really interesting. Um, He seems to have, like, gathered a lot of... Or, like, made a lot of good inferences about glamour and, you know, like, oh, fairy must use a lot of glamour on their appearance. And so, like, the hair will have some. It'll have some power. And he's validated. Like, she's like, oh, your instincts were good. And I was like, ha ha. Like, take that, Rose. Like, <laughs> Blake has good instincts, at least sometimes. Yeah. And then there was also an interesting thing about, like, different uses for the glamour. And he was kind of like, hair has a purpose? What? And just, like, moved on. <laughs> yeah. And I'm... I'm curious about what they're going to use this for i'm not really sure i wonder i'm just so like obsessed with rose getting out of this mirror i was like what if they used to do that but no i bet i mean maybe not like a disguise they kind of talked about that a little bit at least in terms of glamour and right that it wouldn't really it would it'd be more harm than good yeah right i don't know but yeah and then he was like where would you go to find a familiar and she's like where would you go to find a date i was like lol this is weird (laughs) But, like, cool. Um, I like the, like, dating advice bit. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And also, it seems like one of the themes, because Ms. Lewis especially is, I mean, they all kind of keep talking about it, like, using people and blah, blah, blah. Like, everything has a cost. Yeah. It's definitely, like, a theme in the story. And I think that Blake really wants to resist that. And I'm wondering, like, will this end up subverted? Or, like, will this end up true? Uh, or, and will he start to buy into it? I don't know. It's hard when the whole system's against you. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, he's got it rough. <laughs> so they're still walking home, and Miss Lewis basically is very blunt as to Blake's lifespan. People really want Blake to understand he's going to die, like, probably really bad, real, real, real horribly. Yeah. It was really, it's hard to, because I keep trying to, like, rationalize this and like avoid it and like deny it i'm very like oh no like miss lewis like this isn't whatever but like no she really she not even thinks not just thinks this but she thinks it's so confidently that she's just like willing to say it and i mean she does couch it or whatever in a bunch of like you know maybe in years and like like unless something changes or whatever so like i think that she won't be totally fucked when blake doesn't die next month or whatever Mm -hmm. but yeah, it's a lot. Um, and the options suck. It's like join the firm or <laughs> make Barbara Torm your familiar or whatever the fuck. Or um, <laughs> like continue to fight or die a stupid and pointless death. And Okay, please tell me the Barbara Torm one is a prediction that you're going to make. That's amazing. That's hilarious. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, never mind. I don't think we're there yet. Um, <laughs> can you imagine but, how that would go? I don't no. think I can. Yeah. No. No. Um, <laughs> yeah, I like to think that Molly took, like, the third most noble option and hopefully not the fourth option. But I was kind of thinking about it. I just, I like Molly. Yeah. Yeah. I know. But they kind of, they go through, she's like, you really need to get a fucking, like, you really need to do one of these rituals. And he's kind of yeah. like, okay, cool. But yeah, so it, like they kind of run through the rituals and it's kind of like, okay, well, it sounds like he's going to try to do implement because picking a place to stay f- is too hard. Yeah. And picking a person is too hard. And I'm just kind of like, why has it not crossed his mind to bind with Rose or whatever? And like, why has he not mentioned it? Like, because I just, I want him to mention it so that someone could be like, no, she's siphoning your power. Don't do it. Or so that they can be like, oh, yes, this is the perfect solution. Like, I'm just like... Yeah. Why Mm -hmm. has this not occurred to you that, like, oh, I'm going to be stuck with her forever unless I can... I mean, I guess she could get out and then he wouldn't be necessarily. 
but like as things are they're gonna be stuck together forever anyway so you might as well mm-hmm. um yeah but so what are you thinking see. about his, his lifespan are you buying that it's gonna be pretty short or uh, um <laughs> i mean i think i think blake's gonna i don't know i want to say i think blake's gonna do all of the rituals like i think that blake is going to get i'm gonna think about this and we're gonna come back to it when i kind of talk about my prediction because i'm not sure okay that's fair all right moving on blake and rose basically get back home and find maggie waiting at their front door and they end up inviting her inside yeah i thought i i liked how freaked out she was of miss lewis when she was like oh i'm a acquaintance of the late mrs thorburn and she just like freaks out she (laughs) understands what that means and that was real funny um (laughs) yeah i i realized that i attend because maggie was like oh yeah the mirror girl i forgot about you like i i forget that rose like i imagine her as like being physically present Mm -hmm. and i know that that's wrong but i kind of imagine like three people throughout these chapters like Mm. but no it was like oh no it's just blake and this woman following him around or like walking with him or whatever but she's just like such a big presence in my mind that i picture like three of them all the time Mm -hmm. um and i just i just find that interesting i don't know yeah i feel like i do too to be honest and i should know better (laughs) than that but but i mean if rose is talking right there it is it is easier to or just to think of her as another person standing there physically so i can understand that because it's like i know that she's not but but i'm imagining these people that i can't see yeah. Uh, and so she just kind of fits in as mm-hmm. imagining another person that I can't see. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> I don't know. But this was exciting. Yay, Maggie. Yay, Yay friends. Yay. Um, Maggie's knife is interesting. The sacrificial blade is kind of creepy, but cool. I don't know. Mm-hmm. She was also, ref- she's like, the dads want me to go to school. And I was like, are those your dads? Like, why did you say the? Why didn't you say my? Also, why do they know about your magic stuff? Are these like the goblins that we saw walking you home? Like, are they <laughs> your dads? Like, what? Like, why do they know about the magic? But he's, but she was like, oh, but they don't really do it. And I'm like, wait, did you like make your dads aware? Um, that's dumb. Are they your dads? What is going on? Like, I just, mm. I'm so fascinated. Mm. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Uh, but I'm really excited about the next, like, part. I'm I'm assuming slash hoping we see them with Maggie and like showing her books and stuff. Um, I think that'll be really fun. Yeah. Um, to see. Yeah, that was kind of a fun way to end it. Just be like, oh, we're gonna, I'm like, all right, because you can come in. <laughs> yeah, like actually on like an upbeat, you know, it's kind of fun. Yeah, that's kind of nice. Prediction. All right, we're gonna go on to Malia's bold and specific prediction. So let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> all right so um i kind of think that rose was created to replace blake i'm not mm. positive in this prediction but like she seems to be siphoning his power okay and i don't like because i was like grandma rose wouldn't do that to blake but like yeah she fucking would grandma rose does not give a <laughs> shit about blake um yeah. so and i think that's why it's kind of like whatever merry man like whatever like it just like i don't think like yes this will definitely happen but i'm afraid that rose is supposed to like grow in enough power and then like come out of the mirror world and like take blake over so when it's like oh what about blake's lifespan i'm like i don't know like maybe blake like i don't think blake's gonna die and disappear from this story soon okay but maybe blake is supposed to die and rose is supposed to replace him or blake is supposed to like go into the mirror world or blake is supposed to like something um so i don't think he's gonna die soon and i kind of don't think that this i really don't want this to happen i don't think this will happen necessarily but i think that that's uh purpose was that that was sort of the plan Hmm. because again don't think grandma gives a shit (laughs) i mean maybe a little bit of a shit but not a lot gives enough of a shit to make this plan i guess but (laughs) yeah yeah, I'm I'm not very confident in this prediction, but we'll see. Okay. All right. You're saying something about like you thought he was going to get like the three rituals possibly or 
Yeah, I mean, I still... We've been introduced to them so early. And I mean, uh-huh. I know how long this book lasts. You know, like, I know it's like 16 arcs or whatever. And I just... I'm pretty positive that he's not replacing protagonists in the middle of it. And so he has more than enough time over 16 arcs to do all three rituals. And they've been built up. And, like, I don't know. I just... Yeah. I'm pretty sure. Okay. Okay. That he's going to do them all. I mean, like, we're at ver- the very least going to see them all, but I think we're going to see them through Blake. I don't know. Okay. And you said that you think he's going to do the implement one first? I don't actually think he's going to do the implement one first. Ah, okay. But it seems like that's there, but... where he's... It's... That's, like, where his mind like... is at, kind of? Yeah. I still okay. am just, like, fucking bind Rose, even though it might be a bad idea. <laughs> like... <laughs> He's okay. he's not doing the domain first. Okay. <laughs> I hate when you ask me these questions because I feel like it usually means that I'm wrong, but I don't know why. <laughs> it doesn't ne- it doesn't necessarily mean you're wrong. I'm just wondering. I'm just curious. <laughs> That's all. No. Okay. Like neutral response, Malia. Whatever the <laughs> hell that means, huh? <laughs> Let that mess with your brain. Neutrality, <laughs> neutral response. <laughs> Yay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So we're going to just do a quick pale and comparison part as well. So one of the things that really stands out, in my opinion, and I'm pretty sure, well, we've kind of talked about this a little bit, not in depth, obviously, but we've just mentioned it. So Miss Lewis, you can make a pretty good comparison to Big G, um, <laughs> right? In terms of their mentoring. Um, mm-hmm. So let's talk about that. Yeah, they both seem to be very very big fans of the like teach a practitioner to fish metaphor they are not they do not want to tell any more than they have to they are not being straightforward like oh my god toad swallow is another good one to talk about i have to remember a little Mm. bit more about toad swallow's methodology but thinking about like big g and lucy he does not want to tell her shit like he wants her to come and figure out and reason through things and come to her own conclusions which is really good and a very useful skill right and ms lewis here is like you know i want you to be confident in your decisions i want you to figure things out and with her it seems like a lot of it is like because there's a price if she tells them too much um Mm -hmm. but also she wants them to be able to like function without her which they will need to do in like 10 minutes or whatever um yeah But it's also, like, frustrating. I mean, it makes for a good story because you're like, oh, God, I don't know everything. Oh, I want to know. And I think objectively it is really useful for training Blake slash Lucy in, like, valuable skills. Mm -hmm. But, you know, like, in life or death situations, it's pretty frustrating. True. Where, you know, Lucy was very, like, big G, just fucking tell me, like, what's going on right now? Like, I need you to be straight with me. And Uh here it's kind of like... Ms. Lou is like, he's using his blood as a power source, like help him. <laughs> um, but it but they both work out. Um, and I think that they both yeah. help their person a lot. Toad Swallow is less frustrating, in my opinion. I think he's a like he's very like also showman y and he very much like likes teaching, like I think all three of these people do. Um, and mm-hmm. really like in parting their wisdom and seeing other people like grow but from what i remember of the bhi parts he communicated effectively and was kind of like hey these are this is information you need to know and like this is what's going on and it would have been real nice to get a little bit more of that in this chapter but they didn't have time slash Mm -hmm. i'm worried the price is like karma slash something and i don't want them to pay the lawyers with karma Mm -hmm. if they absolutely don't have to i don't know um yeah what did you think i mean i'm trying to remember what i thought the first time i read this but i feel like it was probably kind of similar i actually kind of felt reading through this that i mean this did, lewis did a hell of a lot more than she had to do right because <laughs> she even gave like the room uh-huh. for unlocking the door um she right. kind of i mean it, it is she did promise to get them home safe or whatever yeah but you know but she she did promise to get them home safe but she didn't promise to like necessarily give them all these lessons and things as mm. well right and 
I feel like in the long run, as annoying as it probably was, like, Blake kind of needed, like, I feel like this is more beneficial to him than just giving him the fish, you know? Just because he knows nothing. Like, and (laughs) if he can get some kind of methodology together, like, um, some kind of system to, for one, get, be more confident and hone his instincts a little bit more and to kind of know a little bit more of what to do. And not to mention, like, he did get a bit of a power source out of it in terms of, like, the hair. Maybe not, like, a ton, eh. but <laughs> you're spoiled by by Pale. <laughs> I'm so because spoiled. Because you have to think about what he has. He's got nothing. Yeah. Like, a little bit of glamour, like, when he didn't have anything. Like, That's that true. could be huge. Yeah, he, ha- right? he has June, but, but yeah. <laughs> yes, he has June, but now he actually has something else as well, right? A different type of power source. Yeah. yeah, it's not a heated bullet, but, like, this dude's getting weak as hell from, like, wiping his bloody thumbprints all over the walls, you know? Like, he needs a little bit. Like, this could make or break something for him, right? And so, yes. like, I feel like um, she gave a lot of powerful, um, I mean, she gave a lot. And granted, as she was saying, like, she got some stuff out of it in terms of, like, you know, even you, like, even you were saying, like, you would like her and all that. So, like, you even oh, trust yeah, her no, I do. the reader, right? So, it's like, the reader trusts her more. They probably trust her more. Um, mm. You know, she was getting benefit from it as well. And she sort mm-hmm. of admits, admits that. But, yeah, no, I think that was probably the best way to go <laughs> for for Blake to learn um, and mm. get a little bit of more help from practice stuff instead of just that one time i guess you know yeah yeah agreed and i think Mm -hmm. big g similarly is a really good mentor it's just um for sure (laughs) yeah (laughs) it just hurts that like every time lucy's asking him to be blunt i'm like (laughs) you know that's gotta like because it's like it's going against his nature i mean miss lewis is even saying like if you're blunt and crude then it hurts them on like an intrinsic level right so it's like you know that yeah like when Lucy's doing that, um, it's kind of doing the same thing to Big G. Yeah, it it's sad. It's sad. <laughs> All right, everybody, it's time for our previous discussion question section. So our last discussion question was, is there a way for Blake and Rose to accumulate power that isn't morally reprehensible? Also, is there a moral way to deal with echoes like June? So most of these answers were pretty general. Just in terms of the other verse, one of our answers in particular was pretty good about specifically the story. We're going to just go over those. So start out with Beat Nemesis, which is great name. a pretty great name. Although I like beats. I love so. beats. <laughs> yeah, your nemesis. <laughs> they basically um, went over that there's three main ways to get power in this universe um, trading for it, um, which can be risky in terms of maybe giving something up that costs a lot to you growing it, which is costly to yourself or stealing it, which is the morally crap way. (laughs) Um, they're, They're saying the first two are pretty difficult. So that's why a lot of people probably tend to go towards the morally cruddy ways to do it. Mm hmm. Me C one said that the best ways to gain power are to get an implement to get brought in by a local cabal of others, ideally without the whole murder plot thing, um, or to invite aware to live with you and technically make their lives better while siphoning power. Um, I think they drew most of these from the examples in pale. These are the ways that a lot of practitioners did it. To me, a lot of these are still somewhat morally dubious, although implement and consent by others is maybe not horrible Mm -hmm. i mean if you actually were like making people's lives better and not like a bristow-y kind of way Mm -hmm. then it probably would be more morally all right but yeah that dude straight up sucked man yeah not great um no (laughs) um next we have koala's dlp they were saying most moral uh, would probably be practice involving yourself because that's taking from yourself, not from anybody else. They were saying the next most moral would probably be just bargaining in good faith. 
Um, <laughs> then they gave some other examples of things, but they all basically went downhill to like the really morally bad ones. <laughs> but yeah, the two main good ones is in self and then bargaining in good faith. Mm -hmm. Zerona's ZG said, in terms of binding others, if you have to do it, try to use something neutral. Um, as opposed to something that's directly weak against. So maybe more like do positive bindings instead of negative ones. Um, the way that the Kenneteers have been doing recently with all the echoes they've been rounding up. Yeah, I think specifically they were saying like if I, I wish I read that, I wrote it down, but I didn't think that far ahead. <laughs> but they were saying like in terms of fairy um, hmm. being pretty weak against uh, silver, right? Mm -hmm. Like maybe don't use silver, use something more neutral to mm -hmm. it as opposed to something that's directly like yeah that's fair um yeah so last but definitely not least we've got kippos 21 she was saying um she went a little bit more towards uh story direct which is kind of nice to have as well um so she was saying a couple different ways um one blake and rose could try to trade with the local practitioners basically don't have any power or hardly any power, but they have a ton of knowledge. She was suggesting Maggie especially seems to want knowledge, but some other families um, may be interested in some of the older tomes that they may not have gotten access to. So they might be able to do some bartering or some deal making for some power there. She's also saying they could potentially trade with others. So I think she was saying specifically like for, Power in exchange for maybe some sanctuary um, mm. or, yeah, basically. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, she also is saying getting a little bit more morally gray, um, binding another who's doing harm to the town, but giving it options like to move forward or saying, oh, like, we're going to bind you for this amount of time and take some power from you. She also mentioned echoes. Yay. <laughs> so she was saying basically – Treat them somewhere in between a dead body and a cherished home movie, which so is harsh. just a kind of hilarious way to look at it in terms of I don't think I would have put those two things together. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it makes sense, though, because it's basically, um, well, an echo of something that's happened before. So she was saying if it's a positive echo, like doing good things for the community, try to nourish it, um, make it stronger. Um, let it affect other people positively. If it's neutral, let it be. Um, it may, you know, gain its own, I guess, sense of self more as time goes on. If it's harmful, bind or destroy as needed. So thank you guys for answering our question. We really appreciate it. Yes, thank you. This week's discussion question, if you beat a fairy in a duel, what would you take from them and why? Yeah. So we're curious about. Yeah. We'll try not Slash. to judge you if you eat their heart or kidneys. I mean, <laughs> oh I'm, I'm not going to lie. I'm probably going to judge a little bit because that's yeah. just. And are, are you going to eat them raw? <laughs> I mean, does that, is that going to make a difference? I don't Ew. know. Anyway. I'm yeah, curious it's, it's as gross. to if you really don't want anything from a fairy, like what other other would you want to beat and what would you take from them? Um, mm. But fairy are fun. So. Fairy or fun. <laughs> but yeah, you can feel free to substitute another other um, if you want to try to duel them and take a power source from them. Whatever you'd like to say, we're interested in hearing. All right. Well, thanks for listening, everyone. If you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to help support the podcast, please subscribe, share it with your friends, and leave a rating and review. If you'd like to support Wild Bo as he continues to write fantastic stories, go to patreon.com slash wildbow. You can follow the pod on Twitter at Pale Comparison or send us an email at paleincomparisonpod at gmail.com. Keep an eye out for our Reddit thread in r slash parahumans where you can answer our discussion question and share your thoughts on this episode. In addition, if you'd like to see all of my predictions laid out, check out our episode description for a link to a prediction tracker. All right, this week's fun fact. A little bit gross um, <laughs> and it's uh, got it from Leah's boyfriend. So thanks, Ben. And it's all your fault, Ben. <laughs> um, but the placenta gets its name, weirdly, um, from the shape of an ancient Greek and Roman cake. 
I guess they both made this cake, consisting of layers of dough, honey, and cheese. Yeah. Um, he was saying it's like some kind of cheesecake thing. Um, <laughs> not your traditional cheesecake. I don't know. I don't look at a placenta and think that looks like a cake, but <laughs> I guess the ancient Greek and Romans, maybe they weren't that good as, at the aesthetics, you know? I mean, maybe they did their best and that's just what it looked like. And <sighs> I don't know, but <laughs> that's not the name that I would have chosen for this yeah. organ, but you know, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, have a nice week. Bye.